Hi, I'm Suzette and A. Mantilla from Peace Ed Sciences 3A, and today we are going to talk about controlling particle size and gravimetric analysis. So like I said, our topic for today is about controlling particle size and gravimetric analysis. Before we dwell on the main topic, let us have a review on some terms. Gravimetric methods of analysis are based on the conversion of ions, elements, radicals into a pure and stable compound, which can be directly weighed and quantified. Relative supersaturation, which is equals to Q minus S over S, wherein Q stands for the concentration M of the solute at any instant, and S is the equilibrium solubility of the solute. If Q is less than S, the solution is said to be unsaturated. And if Q is equal to S, the solution is saturated. Lastly, if Q is less than S, the solution is said to be supersaturated. If you want for the best results of your, of, of your analyte or the precipitate, Q should be as low as possible and S should be relatively large. There are two types of particles. The first type is colloidal particles. These are solid made up of particles having diameters that are less than 10 to the power of 4 meters. Colloidal suspension shows no tendency to settle from solution, nor are they easily filtered. The second type of particles is the crystalline particles. Having dimensions on the order of tens of a millimeter or greater and are temporarily dispersed in the liquid phase which is called crystalline suspension. This crystalline suspension tends to settle spontaneously and are readily filtered. So there are four ways in controlling the particle size. These ways are all experimental variables that which leads to crystalline precipitate. The first way is hot solutions, both sample and the precipitating agent. Elevating the temperatures to increase the solubility of the precipitate. The solubility should not be too great or the pre precipitation will not be quantitative. The bulk of the precipitation may be performed in the hot solution and then the solution may be cooled to make the precipitation quantitative. As the solubility increases, the temperature also increases. Therefore, the relationship between these two are indirectly proportional. The second type of way is diluting the solutions, both the sample and the precipitating agent again. Dilution is the process of decreasing the concentration of a solute in a solution, usually simply by mixing with more solvent like adding more water to the solution. To dilute such a solution means adding more solvent without the addition of more solute. To minimize the Q or the concentration of the solute at any given instant, lower degree of relative supersaturation is possible by keeping the concentrations of precipitating reagents as low as possible at the time of mixing. The third type of ways to control the particle size is the slow addition of the precipitating agent with good steering. This is done to minimize the Q or the concentration of the solute at any given instant, just like the other one, wherein it is the diluting the solutions. This is done by a steering prevents local excesses of the reagent. And the last ways experimental variable that leads to crystalline precipitates is the pH control, which is done to increase the solubility. If the solubility of the precipitate depends on pH, larger particles can also be produced by controlling pH. For example, large easily filtered crystals of calcium oscillate are obtained by forming the bulk of the precipitate in a mildly acidic environment in which the salt is moderately soluble. The precipitation is then completed by slowly adding a chaos ammonia until the acidity is sufficiently low for removal of substantially all of the calcium oxalate. The additional precipitate produced during this step deposits on the solid particles formed in the first step. 
So, these are the summary of the four ways in controlling the particle size. The first one is hot solutions. This is done to increase the solubility. The second one is dilute solutions. This is done to decrease the Q or the molar concentration of the solute at any instant. And the third is slow addition of the precipitating agent with good steering. This is done to keep the Q low and prevent formation of electric bilayer. And the last one is pH control. This is done to increase the solubility. Check comprehension. Are all precipitates can be formed crystals under practical laboratory conditions? Thank you everyone for watching about the discussion of controlling particle size. Keep safe and God bless.